My name is Darren Kest. I'm an ear, nose, and throat surgeon here at Christian Northeast Hospital. And today I'll be uh, performing an endoscopic sinus surgery on a 32-year-old gentleman who has extensive sinus and polyp disease. He's had two previous surgeries in the past at a different facility and he's not done very well or responded favorably to medical management and his condition reoccurred. He ends up with reoccurring sinus infections requiring antibiotics. He has difficulty breathing through his nasal passages because those polyps have grown so big they're blocking his ability to breathe. So today we plan on doing an endoscopic approach. We're using a technology called image guided navigation sinus surgery which will allow my instruments to communicate with the imaging to make it more safe for the patient and get a more thorough procedure performed today. I'm going to be entering into the patient's right nasal cavity. What I visibly see here is just extensive polyp disease. The instrument I'm using is called an endoscopic mini shaver and it's kind of like roto-rootering the polyps. So you'll kind of miraculously see them disappear. Because of the extent of the disease, I'm going to cauterize as I go along. So obviously it's very hard to know where you're at, so you really rely on the image guided navigation in order to help direct you because you just got such extensive disease and also the previous surgeries. I almost don't even need to really look at the patient as much as I normally would just because the anatomy is so altered. So right now I'm just trying to get control of some of these polyps in the nasal cavity. All this white grapey stuff, this is all just polyps. This was completely obstructing this gentleman's ability to breathe through his nose. He has a medical condition that makes him susceptible to developing these polyps. This is not a life-threatening condition, so we don't want to do anything to put him at risk for anything, any serious injuries, but we have to do the best we can operatively to make him as successful as we can medically post-operatively. Trying to cauterize right now. Most of my bleeding's coming from the septum, from just the mucosal damage from removing the polyps. It's some fragments of bone from the ethmoid sinuses, as it looks like I'm in the ethmoid sinuses. His biggest complaint before surgery was difficulty breathing and headaches. So he presented to the ER several times, and one of the times they did a CAT scan of the head. And fortunately, there was nothing in his head that was worrisome, but they saw the extensive disease in his sinuses. These are all polyp disease in here. These are, this is just extensive, extensive polyps. All the way down, all the way back to his nasal pharynx. I'm in his nasal pharynx right here. That's his eustachian tube orifice and this is all polyp in here. I'm going to try the balloon. So this surgery is, it can be categorized as somewhat of, a, somewhat of a minimally invasive surgery for many people. Open techniques are seldom ever done anymore. The goal of this gentleman is just to breathe through his nose. You see the screen here? So this screen goes against the walls and that screen is impregnated with a steroid. We've used some new innovative material in this surgery called Propel, which is a drug eluding stent that releases over time a steroid and that topically will reduce further inflammation, maintaining patency of those sinus openings, hopefully allow us to more effectively treat him with the medicines. He's going to end up breathing so much more comfortably and he's also going to have less likelihood of developing infection in his sinus cavities because they can ventilate and drain more freely now. So I just completed a fairly complicated endoscopic sinus surgery. This patient had fairly advanced disease. Uh, we were kind of troubled and delayed as a result of some of the bleeding that occurred intraoperatively. 
However, we were able to uh, contain that and proceed. I think we were able uh, to effectively open up all of his paranasal sinus cavities, remove all gross visible polyp disease, and uh, provide this patient with the opportunity to respond more favorably to uh, post-operative medical therapy. The patient's going to do well. He'll be discharged home with some specific instructions on how to care for himself. He will require some pain medication and some limitation in activity until he sees me next week. Um, and, uh, and that's about it. So we kind of see how things progress, see how well he does, and, uh, and have to modify things as uh, we see fit. Thank you.